Hey everyone, it's Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A Emails 11. And you guys know why I'm doing this because I keep getting emails and sometimes I get phone calls on the show and I just can't answer everything. So I'm just let's get right into it. Uh, this one's from Chip. He says, Hi Mark, I heard you talking about the moon's craters and how they all are perpendicular to the surface and wanted to pass along some helpful info. Google electric discharge machining as well as electric craters. All craters we observe match arc discharge properties. Craters have flat bottoms and some have central peaks, all consistent with the electric model. Electric craters often occur in chains and have smaller craters that are on the crater's edge. Just another data point to mull over. By the way, uh, who if you do what happened on the flat earth this week.com, a great resource, has announced they are closing, sending a rallying cry through community in the hope it can be kept alive. Uh, you read a Douglas Adams quote, read a Douglas Adams quote a while back. If you know the story, you'll remember that early on the ball, Earth is destroyed. My mom grew up on Santura Island, which I believe is not too far north of you. The phrase, get a clue, takes on a new meaning. It's from Chip in Texas. Thanks, Chip. <clears throat> this one is from uh, Mary. Uh, and it says, do not read the name at the top of the email. And there's a different name than Mary. Anyway, Mary says, Mark, I tried to send you a screenshot of the 314 million on Google for Flat Earth, but I had to get a new computer and I'm having trouble sending that to you. But yes, it was that high one day. Also, I have a great idea for all frustrated Flat Earthers like me that cannot tell others for now and feel trapped with that frustration. I've been doing this for some time now. I'm not sure it, if it is helping, nor will I ever really know unless someone tells you on one of your shows. I printed out a bunch of papers on bright colors that have just a sentence or two with some great video links on it. I carry them with me in my purse. Whenever I go to a store, place of business, or any place, especially if I travel, I tape one of those papers up somewhere in the bathroom. It may read something like, if you are brave enough to look and know the truth about our Earth, go to enclosedworld.com or something similar to this. I have several variations and other links as well on the papers. I tape them in a place where others will see them when they use the bathroom. Sometimes I tape them to the inside of a stall or even a mirror or some other obvious place for anyone to find. You can leave these papers on buses and books in the library, bookstores, or other places. Let's all spread the word by living the, leaving these everywhere. Sincerely, Mary. Hey, Mary, you know, it's not a bad idea putting a single flyer. I like the stall idea because, you know, when you're in a stall, most people are like, I have nothing to read. Well, there you go. I'll put that on the wall and have them look it up on their phone. That's awesome. Rob writes, <clears throat> title of this is called Flatter Terrarium. And it's from robertlomas.com slash megyard. So Robert L O M A S dot com slash M E G Y A R D. Megalithic Yard. I wonder if anyone has applied this theory to help scale the map, A E or otherwise. Terrarium system, I would like to ask a purpose. A. What if the creator is not around anymore and we're left like germs in a petri dish and the mechanisms are starting to fail to due to lack of maintenance? It's possible. It's a great, and I'm sure that's been talked about in different science fiction stories. B. There are some that are now trying to gain control of the control room. Two random hidden in plain sight film references. One is standing up and... Uh, the other one's works digging up to flood their world, and I don't know. I'm Anyway, I'm a pagan. If I was forced to pigeonhole myself, flat earthers and pagans are equally fragmented, it would be shamanic Celt. However, I do enjoy Norse mythology, and recently had a penny-dropping moment that went, went along these lines. The world tree is effectively three discs above, middle, and below. Norse mythology also has a battle with giants. Uh, so lots of dots connecting for me. Uh, forgot to mention I do subscribe to the Graham Hancock world with amnesia theory paradigm hidden history. So you may or may not know more about this than me. My hope is that you do or know someone who does. Most of the podcasts have a very strong Christian take on the subject, yet pagan earth 
based beliefs predate this and do have flat earth references. Well, I hope that made some sense. And thanks again for the survival PDF. Stay ahead of the curve. Oh, I like what you did there, Rob. So thank you, Rob. That's awesome. William writes, great awakening continued. Mark, I emailed you on October 18th, 2016, in which you read uh, on your Q&A email 10 show. So now that I know this is legit, sorry about being skeptical, but then again, I question everything at this point. With that said, here are a couple questions in short. First, if there is said to be 10,000 satellites and space junk orbiting in some unison fashion in a circular motion, and said items are made of reflective materials. However, I have looked with both naked eye and well as optics, but cannot see the twinkle of any reflection of sunlight off these said items. Second, I was digesting the sea level idea and how the so-called melting of polar caps is causing a rise in sea level. So on a ball earth, the idea that a rise in sea level is fathomable due to the magnitude of water it would take to equally the rise to a level point all around the globe. However, on a flat plane, it does in fact make sense. On the video running during your shows, there is a clip of a fountain set up as a flat plane, which brought this to my attention and it just makes more common sense. Lastly, we are asking for common sense to take effect. However, what we need is the not so common sense as the norm seems to be not thinking for ourselves. In closing, it was nice to hear my email being read as it validates and makes this whole thing more believable. And that's from Diane Vaughn. And her quote is, social normal, normalization of deviance means that people within the organization become so much accustomed to deviant behavior that they don't consider it as deviant, despite the fact that they far exceed their own rules for the elementary safety. Awesome. Um, <clears throat> Laura writes, Hey Mark, in case you're reading this email on air, fees, please feel free to say my name and any other info except the email address as it is my personal email. You were one of the first people I listened to after the Flat Earth Truth hit me. It took me a week or two to realize that everything is wrong with the globe model. I have combined my Flat Earth knowledge as well as other conspiracy truths and spiritual ideas with my creative skills and opened up an online shop on Etsy, E-T-S-Y. Some of my handmade creations were inspired by you. Therefore, I would love to send you one as a gift. However, I couldn't find your address anywhere. Please let me know it. Also free to take a look at my Etsy shop at etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash crystal indigo. I have a Facebook page as well. Facebook.com slash crystal indigo shop. I'll be waiting for your response. All the best, Laura. Uh, and yeah, you guys want to send something, by all means, just email me and said, hey, I'd like to send you something and I'll shoot off a physical address you can send it to. So thank you, Laura, and I can't wait to see it, whatever it is. Uh, Darren writes, Mark Sargent, you may use my name if you read this on the air. Mark, as a game developer guy, how hard do you think it would be to make a game like 3D environment that actually shows what the world would be like if we had eight inches of curvature per mile squared. Maybe a mod to a game like World of Warcraft or an Elder Scrolls RPG. I'd be interested in seeing such a simulation. Peace, Darren in Wisconsin. And uh, yeah, Darren, uh, it wouldn't be that hard actually to build it in, but it it's harder than what they use. Remember, programmers are kind of like everybody else and that they, they, they take the path of least resistance. So if nobody cares about the curve, they're not going to put it in, so, which is why most video games are built on a perfectly flat surface. So even, for example, you know, Warcraft, which is still going strong after 12 years, if you added, if you, if you turned everything into an eight inch and eight inches per curve, scenario it wouldn't make any difference because you aren't allowed to get enough altitude in any warcraft vehicle to ever be able to ever notice it so it'd be for nothing uh you could do it but you you literally would not be able to see anything now if there was a game that allowed you to pull you know pull off the 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 surface oh i don't know a thousand miles yeah sure sure you could be able to do it but i don't play anything like that right now so sorry i don't think it's going to do any good uh that's all i can tell you Next one's called 
called Nothing, but it's from a guy named Richard. So either you don't read your emails, that's a great opening line, uh, are too busy ignoring my email or actually aren't a flat earther as you purport. Nonetheless, as will be doing I will be doing my idea whether you are on board or not. Now, that being said, if you are a true earther, earther, I have proof sats are land-based. Uh, he, he mentions dishpointer.com. Uh, you can see the majority of North America satellites seem to orbit above islands. If you zoom in, Google image is not available. Wonder why. But I get this. I have found tourists from Galapagos with pictures of all the equipment on an island that is supposed to be a nature preserve. Even more damning is some west ones are in jungle areas with some nature preserve allocation. See a pattern? If you don't respond, I will assume you are just in this for the monetary gains and don't actually care. That being said, if you pr do prove to be fake, I won't watch your videos or listen to your show. Good Lord, man, you are all over the map and you didn't even sign your name. So hopefully you're listening to this email right now. I mean, your thing says Richard Gelinas, J, I'm sorry, G-E-L-I-N-A-S, but whatever, man. I've been doing this for 18 months. How long have you been doing it? Moving on. This is from Gary. Gary writes, impossible observation. Hey, Mark, Gary here from Pretoria, South Africa. I've been a flat earther for about seven or eight months now, and I listen to all of your shows. I have something amazing to share with you. I recently watched that video's A Mountain of Evidence, and it got me thinking and reminded me of a well-known tourist attraction he near here in the province of, oh boy, Mapumalanga, called God's Window. Named so because of its heavenly view of the landscape around it, stretching for kilometers on end. I myself have been there twice and can personally tell you it's amazingly breathtaking. On a clear day, you can literally see our bordering neighbor country, Mozambique's capital city, Maputo, which, get this, is an astounding 185 miles away. That's 298 kilometers. When I found this out, I immediately looked up a trusty Earth curvature calculator to check what the supposed curvature would be. Now, to make sure I did this correctly, I looked up the height from sea level of both locations, God's window being approximately 1.2 miles above sea level, and Maputo being near the coast only 370 feet. But even with this massive elevation difference, according to the curvature calculator, and I hope you are sitting down for this one, Maputo, from the vantage point of God's window, should be one mile beneath the horizon. But with some good binoculars on a clear day, it is clearly visible. We are talking about almost 300 kilometers here. 300 kilometers here. There, that is a globe killer right there for me. Take that, you globies. Globies? Awesome. Uh, just wanted to share this with you and your listeners and also encourage everyone listening to do similar tests in their locations all over the world. Because if everyone all over the world can prove that their part of the world is flat, then I can't see how the globes... I'm sorry, Globies can, are countering that. So I consider every successful test like this uh, as just another nail in the globe-shaped coffin. Thanks for the good work you do. Keep it up. Kind regards and God bless. Gary Van Zyl of South Africa. Awesome. Uh, Gail writes... Hi, Mark. I much enjoy your videos and interviews. If you have not stumbled upon it, on YouTube just yet, please check out the 16-part series, Flat Earth Stanley Kubrick. I believe it would... 16 parts, and I haven't heard of this? Uh, I believe it would be well worth your time to do so. Keep it up, Gail Northcutt from Baldwin, Maine. Thank you very much, Gail. I'll, I'll have to check it out. 16 parts, really? Wow. Uh, Rob writes one, and he calls it JFK Education. Uh, Mark, I'm in the UK. And this is also sent to uh, Flat Earth and other hot potatoes. Uh, when I was at school in the 1980s and I told about the JFK assassination, we were told the official story was nonsense. So today, my eldest comes home and tells me they've been learning about the JFK assassination and how the whole thing is nonsense. So my question to you, Americas, is what are your kids told? I, I know you don't have kids, but ask friends that do. Thanks, Rob. Uh, yeah, when it comes to the JFK thing, I, I know they bring it up in, in various history things. I don't know what age group they, they bring it up, and I, or if it's a specific topic uh, like American history that you're you going to be taking before you bring it up. I don't know. 
Uh, but I know that for the most part, we teach it was a lone gunman. You know, we, we've been preaching that, you know, that it was Lee Harvey Oswald and Oswald was killed by Ruby and it was a nice tidy bow on it and, and nobody was the, the wiser. Although I wish everyone would watch Oliver Stone's brilliant movie JFK uh, from the early 1990s. So interesting question. Michael writes regarding the flat earth theory. Mark, I recently came across one of your videos that sparked my interest about Flat Earth. Ever since I started school, I was told the Earth was round, so I believed it. After watching your Flat Earth clues, Q&As, and recommended videos, I still believe the Earth is round. I'm not writing this to argue or criticize at all. I admire you for thinking outside the box, or is it appropriate to say globe here? Anyways, if the Earth was flat, not a globe, and the Sun rotates around the Flat Earth as you show in many clips with the model of the Sun and the Moon spinning, then why can we see the Sun set in the ocean rather than move parallel to the ocean's horizon? I lived in California and now here in Washington, so I can easily see the Sun set in the ocean with my naked eye. That was one question. Next, the Earth's angular velocity is roughly a thousand miles an hour at the equator. Take the Earth's circumference divided by 24 hours and we get a number. Perhaps we don't feel the tangential or normal acceleration due to the rotation because humans have evolved to adapt to the angular accelerations. What do you think? Eh, maybe, but I doubt it. Uh, the ISS being a hoax sparked my interest, so I started looking around more. In school, we learned how two masses attracted to each other could be explained by gravity such as the moon and the Earth or by a human standing on Earth and so on. ISS spacewalks, how come smaller items aren't attracted to the larger mass, ISS? Videos show astronauts constantly drifting away from the equipment they're working on. Just a thought I might add to uh, keep you thinking. Could it be because they want to drift away, uh, float up to the top of the pool they're diving in? Hmm. Now, when I first watched your Flat Earth videos, I felt the same exact feeling as I felt when I saw videos about no planes hitting the towers. The feeling was, what the hell is he talking about? With a slight headache because I was going against popular belief. Guess what? I'm a firm believer no planes hit the towers. There was no plane in Penn State and no plane at the Pentagon, so why would I believe there were two in the World Trade Center? Like no planes, I may soon come to the realization the Earth is flat. A sudden thought for the 52 mile gap between Chicago and Michigan State. Eight inches drop per mile is the curve of the Earth, but we can see the skyline clearly when we should at most see the peak of the Sears Tower. Eight inches per mile means that half of the circumference of the Earth would equal its radius and drop. I think he gives some mathematical calculations. He goes, has anyone else tried to verify the eight inches per drop mile? Oh yes, actually they have, man. Uh, please let me know if you receive this email and what you think about it. I've always wanted to talk to a celeb. Smiley face. Take care, Michael M. He's a mechanical engineer uh, out of U of I. Is that University of Indiana? Maybe? Anyway, thanks, Michael. Awesome. Uh, let's see. Questions about the Ross Sea Reserve. Hi, my name is Sabrina from Germany. I live in Kaiserslautern, Kaiserslautern, which is pretty close to Rammstein Air Base. I just recently encountered the whole flat earth idea, but every day I dig deeper, it seems to make more sense. I personally just take the whole God part out of the whole thing since I do not believe in such a thing. It makes also pretty much sense that there is a dome over everything. I tried to find information about the wall or the dome itself, its origins. So far, haven't found something reasonable yet, except that no one has ever been there because it's impossible of coldness and lack of air. I don't cope with the idea that it's impossible so good, uh, so that's not something satisfying for me. I just heard on the news that the whole Ross Sea has been declared Marine Reserve, which struck me immediately. I have a map of where all cities of Antarctica should be on a flat earth and exactly the whole area is exactly where I would say is the closest bridge to mainland. So if I would want to go on a strip to find the end, I would start there according to flat earth maps available. I wonder. In the news, they said global warming did not have any effect down there. What if it did and the barrier is melting so it would be easier to cross it? I mean, honestly, it makes absolutely no sense to me that the whole, all the nations agreed on saving that place for keeping whales and penguins safe when every minute 
uh, their species goes extinct. I would love to hear what your opinion on that is. Uh, it's it's very possible. Sure, why not? Why not? You know, the, the, the not only is Antarctica the outside edge, but the outside edge is melting. Sure, it's, that's a great storyline. I like it. Uh, I would love to hear. And if you would uh, have any other ideas on the edge, the dome itself, of course, who built it. It makes absolute sense that you explained in your video about humans not coping with the entrapment. I personally experienced the world way smaller since thinking about a flat world and that every human would ask what lies behind it, who built it and why we are trapped. I do understand that we are trapped, right? No escape out of the dome? Question mark. So much text from so far away, but I would love to read more from you. Greetings from a new believer across the oceans, Sabrina from Germany. Thanks, Sabrina, and uh, hopefully you are listening to this, and uh, hopefully I answered some of it anyway. Uh, this one is from Bill. Bill writes, hello, Mark. Here's an email for your excellent Flat Earth Q&A or Strange World show. First off, while researching an answer to a question posed by a commenter on one of your videos, I stumbled upon a Flat Earth Pinterest page, page and it's pinterest.com slash Caroline Mezoian, which is M-E-Z-O-I-A-N, slash The Flat Earth Conspiracy. What caught my eye was her title paragraph, which states uh, that you have been, what you've been saying all along when you open the Flat Earth Pandora box. The Flat Earth Conspiracy, I was trying to debunk Flat Earth Theory, but instead I'm realizing the programming we have been under. Scary. Secondly, when the No Forest video originally hit YouTube, you said it was interesting, but did not resonate with you like it did with many others. I found a video interview with people associated with NYSTV, now you see TV, talking about the evidence that some of those plateaus may not be tree stumps, but the foot and ankle of giants ooh, that stood under those trees. The video is at least worth checking out. What caught my attention is that some rocks found are actually fossilized organs, such as the heart, liver, and lungs. Even DNA tests have been done to prove that it was at one time fleshy organic material. You say you keep an open mind since you start your day with Flat Earth, so at least check out the video. And then he links me to the video. And lastly, thanks again for your hard work. Little by little, I have been trying to upload to YouTube uh, my videos of the day, um, day moon at sunrise. Even small videos take forever to process, and my t also my tinyurl.com Flat Earth Links page is growing rapidly. Awesome. Signed, Bill Keith. Great, Bill. Thanks very much. Uh, this one's from Daryl. Daryl says, hey, Mark, your work changed my life ever since you were on Coast to Coast. I've been uh, beside myself and obsessed ever since. Me too, Daryl. That being said, lately, I feel that NASA is a great target for this movement. Uh, the most obvious physical evidence we have are aspects like the fourth wall concept, the fake, faked first photo of the Earth. Uh, have you seen the fake footage of the Apollo mission to the moon? The one where they messed up the shadow of the earth with scaffolding and the like. I am assuming you have. Yes, that's called, uh, it's from the documentary uh, called um, A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Moon. So, or, or Astronauts Gone Wild, take your pick. But A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Moon, I think is what the footage you're talking about. Also, someone must find the Challenger crew if they really are still alive. That is absolutely unbelievable and close to a silver bullet as well. Not the smoking gun, if you excuse the silly expression, but definitely vital for us at this point. Perhaps I should take the initiative. Yeah, yeah, if anyone wants to track down one of those guys, totally be a feather in your cap. And I'd make, you know, I'd, I'd reproduce your video all over YouTube if I could. Uh, if you pass through Vancouver, Canada, on the way to or from Victoria, it would be nice to buy you a beer. The least I can do for someone who changed my life. Also, this is a lonely town for flat earthers. <laughs> Thanks again for everything best, Daryl Croswell. Uh, you're very welcome, uh, Daryl. And yeah, if I'm up in Vancouver anytime, I will definitely come see you. Uh, let's see here. Justin writes... Uh, there's a few of these. I'll see if I can answer what I can. It's not too long. Some questions remaining. Apologize if I did not catch, catch the answer on the video. You mentioned briefly that the interior of the South Pole is really the exterior. Does that mean the interior of the South Pole surrounds the flat Earth? Yes, it does. If so, skip to three. If not, C2. Okay, skip to three. Uh, you have thousands of pilots affirming UFO sightings, opening themselves up to extreme ridicule for suggesting a conspiracy theory. Can you cite the name of one pilot 
ex including contact info, work history, just one who can affirm they saw evidence of the end of the earth, providing detail of exactly what transpired, uh, like they saw the end of the earth or was stopped by military pilots. The same type of pilot who would admit to seeing a UFO would surely admit the same regarding the earth having it. Oh, no, they wouldn't. No, 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 no. UFOs are nothing. Uh, compared to uh, the, the flat earth, the enclosed world theory. No pilot will be allowed uh, to, if they saw it, if they weren't silenced immediately, they would be completely dissuaded. Plus, what media outlet they're going to go to? Who are they going to talk to? Uh, think about this. If you had a really groundbreaking story like that, I mean, extremely groundbreaking, who would you go to tomorrow? You're going to go to CNN, Fox, NBC, uh Art Russia Today. Who are you going to go to? Alternative news sources? You're not going to be able to run the story. No one's going to let you run it. So uh, even if there was a pilot that saw it, he's not going to be able to talk to anybody about this. Uh, four, flights to Asia sometimes go eastward, sometimes westward. If the earth was flat, one direction would be incorrect. If And any pilot with an IQ of 50 would see the error. Surely there are some testimonials of pilots revealing this. Again, uh, first off, the pilots have to go through GPS. So the GPS system is telling them everything they need to know. Unless the pilot questions GPS, and again, where, who are you going to go to? What pilot is going to talk about this? Uh, you know, that, that the maps are completely wrong. I mean, I was lucky to get the pilots that I did saying that, look, the gauges seem to indicate that the earth is flat. So, but, but, you know, seeing, saying any more than that? No. Remember, they got careers to think about. Uh, let's see. Five. What are the sun? A programmed massive light heat source that moves across the sky. Okay, let's presume this then. How does one explain one part of the globe is high noon, the other is part midnight? If the earth was flat, you'd have some light. No, no, no. It's an old question. And that is, uh, the, it's the question is, why are there time zones? It's like you're still thinking in a solar system model and that the sun is an omnidirectional light source. What if it's not? Because that's what I'm getting at. The sun is more like a spotlight. Uh, or if it is omnidirectional, it's it's moving to the point where it's small enough to where it does fade away. Um, it Yeah, if it was very, very massive and traveling across us, you would be able to see it from a great, great distance away. But how far is great? If the sun is only 30 miles wide, and we're talking about tens of thousand miles transit, then it's going to go away and you're not going to see the light anymore. No different than a headlight going off in the distance. Uh, number six, how about a simple observations when you shoot a bullet at a target 800 yards away? While you are on a target windage at 100 yards, the bullet falls to the right or left consistently at 800 yards, which can only be explained by the ground moving or rotating relative to the bullet fired. How can this be explained by the flat earth? Boy, this guy, have you not watched any of my testimony shows yet? Look, I've interviewed guys from artillery to missile to aircraft, you know, to submarine uh, uh, weapon systems which are firing far, far longer than 800 yards. We're talking about 20, 30, in some case, 50 or 60 miles. And no one is taking into account, which are the words you're looking for here is the Coriolis effect. No one's taking that into account. So if they're not taking into account at, 50, at a 50 mile shot, what the heck is half a mile? Do you, tell me the calculations. Seriously, tell me, get me a sniper that'll come on air, that'll do his own video and saying, I absolutely account for the Coriolis effect at 800 yards. Because I had a Navy SEAL guy that sent me a statement saying, look, it's not even in the uh, Navy SEAL, SEAL sniper handbook. They do not teach it. So you find me that, uh, you know, the, the people that are taking that into account, 800 yards, find me one of them, send me a video, send me a document, have them put something in writing. Then maybe we'll talk. Uh, seven, how about the territory north and south of the Arctic circles? How could the sun be not be visible in Alaska yet still be visible in Washington state if the earth was flat? Wow, this guy's having a hard time. Can you direct me to an accurate map of the flat earth with legend indicating mileage? Thanks and regards, Justin Bronk. Justin, you're going to need a lot, you're gonna need a lot more research you're going to have to do before you start asking questions like this. It sounds like you just got started, which is great. Go into YouTube, type in flat earth, set the filter to, I don't know, a year and just start watching videos. It should start help. I mean, yeah, you'll have more questions down the road, but at least you can get some of these out of the way. Uh, anyway. Thanks, Justin, for reminding me that how many people like you are at still out there. Dave writes, angular acceleration. Mark, can you work out the math for the angular acceler acceleration of the Earth's three movements and then work out if we could feel them? Regards, David Tanner, Australia, otherwise known as Down Under. Um, no, I mean, 
yeah, we could work out the maths on the actual rotation and, and how the Earth's moving, how it's spinning around the sun and how it's spinning on its axis and how it's flying through the solar system, you know, how the solar system is moving. But as far as human perception of it, no, because you get to remember human perception is extremely weak, extremely limited. Uh, I, I use this in one of my clues where there's been uh, university studies where, and, and I'll give you the, 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 the layman's example. If you've ever been in a car and stop and go traffic and you zone out for a second and all of a sudden the car next to you is moving. Okay, but then you think, wait, is he moving or did you let your foot off the brake? Are you moving? We have a really, really hard time with relative motion to where when they did a test, you know, they took university uh, uh, researchers and what they did was they put them in fake cars and they either moved the wall in front of them very slowly or they moved the car very slowly. No one could tell what was moving. Human beings cannot tell re relative motion worth a damn, uh, which is why simulators work so well on us. Uh, another example would be uh, even with the old school televisions, some people, you know, if you show them just a video, a first person video of someone on a roller coaster, even though they're not on a roller coaster feeling any motion whatsoever, they will get sick. Why? Because the mind is a powerful thing and it can be influenced very, very easily. So that's the answer I got for you. Steve writes, Strange World 52 help. Hey Mark, your video is compelling and I have viewed several others, but one thing I need help wrapping my head around is an eclipse. I can't find a good explanation and it's holding me back. Can you help explain this in a flatter setting? Thank you for all the work you do on this subject. Sincerely, Steve Johns. Send for my iPhone. Uh, yeah, when it comes to the eclipse, I'll, I'll treat it like everything else in the, that's in the sky. And that is, if you've ever been to a planetarium, if any of you haven't, I suggest that you go before they all close. Uh, you don't necessarily have to go to the Hayden Planetarium, which is run by Neil deGrasse Tyson, but you should go to something local. Every major city, I think, has one. Look up in the sky when you're there, you know, get stay in there for an hour and, and let your eyes adjust and then watch what you see on the ceiling. And tell me then, once you leave, how it was done. The thing is, you got to go out and say, well, it's obviously part of a display system. Well, obviously, because you were in a planetarium. The question is, with a more advanced technology, how do you know when you leave that planetarium that you're not just in a bigger one? How do you know? You don't. Well, you say, well, NASA told us or science or something. And it's like, no, 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 you don't know. It's something you were told. It's not something you know for sure. Uh, let's see, this one's called Flat Earth Theory. It's from Andre. Hello, my name is Andre Moore. I'm 24 and I too am a bit of a theorist. Your video blew my mind and I'd love to pick your brain for more information. I'm still only 20 minutes into the video but had to stop for a second to contact you and let you know that I am a big fan so far. I have two questions. What do you make of the hollow earth theory? I'm for it, I totally believe it. And what do you make of the hollow moon theory where they have records of crashing a satellite into the moon, causing it to reverberate like a bell? Yeah, I don't buy that. That is a cover story. Let me know who's who landed on the moon. Where did that story come from? Because if it came from NASA, it's absolute fabrication. It is not true. Uh, I love getting different perspectives about the unknown because it is just that. So don't think I am after a debate. Uh, I just have so many questions. Uh, you and a lot of other people. So thank you. Michael writes, Hi Mark, my name is Michael Simons. I stumbled onto your Flat Earth Clues video 10 to 15 days ago and just straight fell down the rabbit hole. I have watched almost every video you have made and pretty much every other relevant video that several other Flat Earthers have made and just can't get enough. I have posted to my Facebook and have told almost everyone I know and even people I don't know. And they always go right then and start looking up rockets hitting the dome and pictures of the earth and flat earth stuff. I've easily probably single-handedly convinced at least 20 people to go to search YouTube. Awesome, awesome, man. That's great. Uh, you're going against the rule, which is you don't talk about Flat Club, but that's all right. It's working for you. I know that they have told me that they told at least two or three people as well. I know I need to be careful, but I don't have any kids or wife, so I view it as my duty to spread the word as much as I can. I would love to get even more involved in the movement, especially yours. So please give it some thought and get back to me. Flat Earth forever, Mike. Michael Simons. Awesome, Mike. I love your enthusiasm. I love where your head is at and just keep doing what you're doing. Don't change anything at this point. That's awesome. Super. 
Oh, let's see. This one's called Asimov, the Re Relativity of Wrong. Hi, Mark. Contrada. Contrada? For your great job. Lately, I have been listening to you and your videos and radio interviews. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, drink of water. Which I found very interesting. I feel the same about NASA and uh, that about space stuff. I'm not at all religious and don't have studies, uh, not technical skills or scientific at all. Maybe I could say I consider myself a social, economic, environmental activist. Low activity whatsoever. I'm near to Chomsky lectures. Once I have shared with some friends of mine the flatter theory includes, some responded there are scientific evidence, evidences that pr prove Earth as a globe. Here's one attached base on Isaac Asimov about what's right or wrong uh, through, throughout time and how much wrong or right depending on the scientific evidences of each period of humanity. What should be the right position or arguments for discussing in front of this? Your gentle response would be very appreciated. Nacho Manzano from Barcelona, Spain. Um, yeah, Nacho. Seriously, I've never known a guy named Nacho. That's fantastic. Uh, just You just got to size up your audience. That's the big thing. Don't go into it saying, oh, the world is flat. Prove me wrong. Don't, don't do that if you're just dealing with strangers. Uh, you come at it sideways and say, look, have you, has anyone taken a look at the people that are, that are out there talking about the flat earth? And if they seem receptive at all, then give them some more. If they don't seem receptive at all, don't really get into it. Just kind of let it be for now. Uh, that's, that's all I can tell you. Spread the word, but be careful about how you're spreading it. There you go. And as far as scientific evidence goes, if it's from the American Space Organization or any other space organization, don't trust it. Mark Knight writes, Hey Mark, enjoyed your stats chat with Nathan. Uh, how does one find out the actual numbers and volume of flatter searches on Google? Uh, the link here doesn't give this. Uh, any ideas, amigo, Mark, a.k.a. Wakey Wakey? Uh, I don't know. I'm still working on it. Uh, you know, it, go into any search engine, see if you can find a trend. I usually, though, stick to YouTube because I consider YouTube a more honest look at trend searches because everything everything else that's on the general internet are influenced by marketing departments because you can remember out on the general internet we'll just take google as an example they try to sell products that's the big thing you want an internet presence and you will spend thousands if not millions of dollars to do this you know uh, like if you go into google you type in the best chip is you know how, how many how much money is free to lay spending to make sure they're high up on the search uh, how much is Coca-Cola spending? How much is anybody saying? It's like when you type in top whatever, top three, you know, eight cars in the world, every car manufacturer is going to have a marketing team that's going to that's going to really crank it up. So I don't trust anything when it comes to, to Google and Bing and anything else that's out there. I, I do trust YouTube to a point, which is that YouTube videos take a lot longer to make. It's not just something you can you can crank out with keywords. You actually have to make a video and you, gotta, you know, submit it. And it's, a, it's a long involved process. And the numbers that we're generating so far seem to be consistent with what's out there. And that's why I compare it to all the other things that are out there. And that is, it's kind of like a, a People's Choice Awards. And that is, if you inspire people, they will make YouTube videos about it. It's not just you know, the, the corporations that they're involved. It's also the, the people, and which is why Flat Earth is gaining so much ground, which is amazing, of course, is that Flat Earth is doing this without any marketing dollars. So imagine if there was. So thanks, Mark. Oh, Ben writes. What does Ben write? Hey, Mark. This is from Ben Rivera. I want to thank you for the great work and effort you've been putting into getting this message out to us. I appreciate the shows and interviews you have done, and especially one you did with Patricia Steer, The Secret Hangout number 126, Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. I saw a great group of people stepping forward and informing the public of this evil deception we have for so long been entangled. I feel you play a very important part within these many, but also few that have been called to bring light to this world from our creator. I don't want to sound preaching or fanatical, but you hit it on the head with your Flat Earth Clues part 10 video called Hiding God. Let me share with you 
uh, what may be a very important reason why and the others have been chosen. The book of Genesis 1, 14 through 18, if you could get your head around it, you will see our creator's calendar. You see the mark, I'm sorry, you see Mark, it's always been about who we worship. Satan has always wanted us to worship him and we can only worship on God. When we worship who we follow, the who thing also with the flat earth being taken away gets Satan to worship him. If God at creation on the fourth day sets the mean on how to measure time and he does this so we could worship him on all his calendar days, then by worshiping in a Gregorian calendar or any other calendar, Satan has managed to get us to worship on any other day like Sunday or other days. By doing this, he has also secured for us to follow Satan. This may sound a bit hard to accept, but would like you to try to also look into it. I'll enclose a video that may help better understand my concern. God bless and may God keep you well, Ben Rivera. Ben, those last two paragraphs, I don't know if I could really make much out of it, other than the calendar could be Satan's. But anyway, thank you, thank you for everything else you wrote. So, great. Oh, let's do a few more. How about this one's called Good For You? Interesting videos. Very well executed and intellectually satisfying. Good for you. One of mine has 70,000 views and a huge amount of troll comments, meaning I've struck a nerve. It's at, it's called, Why Are Astronauts Still Lying? It's on YouTube. This above issue needs more exposure, in my opinion. One question, the world temperature is highest at the equator and decreases as you go either north or south. What is the mechanism that controls the temperature changes? And that's from Alan. Uh, yeah, Alan, when it comes to the temperature changes on this system, it's not just the sun. It's several things. Uh, it's going to be the jet stream at high altitudes. It's going to be the underwater conveyor system, which is in the water, which controls all the world's currents. It's going to be the magma system, and it's also going to be the sun. Um, think of all the things that control heat, uh, uh, that control temperature in a car, for example. You have the sun coming through the window, sure, but you also have the air conditioning system, you have the heated seats, and you have anything else that, that's going on in there. Uh, so there's, in this case, I'm, uh, it, it'll do. But the comparison to the world, I think, is similar, which is there's more than one thing getting the job done here. And with more con different controls, you can have a more precise direction of, of uh, how it's working. So thanks, Ben. John writes... Dear Mark, I can't begin to say enough to thank you for the wonderful revelations you bring through your YouTube videos. I'll be glad to have more on the subject. It took a lot for me to be convinced of the flat earth, but now I'm into it, I can't get enough of it. I feel angry and betrayed at the powers behind the false education I wasted going through and the senseless deception that awaits man. Shame on them all. Keep up the fantastic work. Regards, John. Cool, John. Jody writes, what's Jody right? Jody writes, hey, Mark, Flat Earth Concepts are in the elementary TV show. Hey, Mark, season five, episode four, Henny Penny, the sky is falling, answers the question about why we don't reveal the flat earth. Sherlock is teased about believing the sun revolves around the earth, etc. The big picture shows all the money the government grants to companies sh could be pulled if the truth comes out plus much more this is a gem sign jody so uh elementary tv show season five episode four henny penny the sky is falling awesome johnny writes pick me pick me okay hello mark first of all i want to say a great big thank you for all the work you've done with flat earth and putting logical sense and reasoning into all your videos my name is johnny and i'm a young bachelor from sunny san diego oh, why mention the young bachelor never mind uh, a good friend of mine casually mentioned to me back in June of this year saying, oh, and by the way, did you know the earth is really flat? I totally thought he was joking, but I could see it on his face. He was dead serious. So I'm like, wait, but we have pictures and tons of evidence that it's a globe. I'm sure you can easily predict the direction of the conversation that followed. To my surprise, though, I was an overly defensive of the globe model as most tend to be right away. I'm a rather big conspiracy buff and love delving into anything that seems to contradict the mainstream media and their misleading agenda. A couple weeks later, my sister, who I am very close to, mentioned she had come across some extremely convincing information stating the Earth is indeed flat. 
I was very inquisitive and asked her a bunch of questions, but really had no major qualms with hearing all this new material. After we got off the phone, I went straight to YouTube to check out this hot topic, and the rest is history. I remember early on when I heard you say in one of your Strange World episodes, and this is my paraphrase, when someone first hears of Flat Earth, if they don't put up a fight to defend the globe, then something might be wrong with them. I immediately started laughing out loud and thought to myself, hmm, I think something is wrong with me because I pretty much accepted this right from the get-go. It's been an incredible journey so far, and I just love listening to you on YouTube whenever I get the chance. I see the world in a whole different light now and get a much clearer image of the bigger picture. I'm sure you've heard this plenty of times before. Yes, you do have a great voice for radio. Always seems so calming and peaceful. Thanks, man. That's, that's always good to hear. Uh, just like the rules of Fight Club, I try to be careful who I share this with and, more importantly, how I bring it up. Excellent. Uh, so far, so good. No arguments or fights or losing any friends over this. I just get that crazy look that I've lost some of my marbles, and I'm totally fine with that. Recently, I had a lengthy conversation with a friend about flight paths and looking up travel times in the Southern Hemisphere. He found a few flights online that seemed to follow the distance on a globe, say between South America and New Zealand and Australia, but when looking at the Flat Earth model, it didn't seem to match. Could you please explain this again? Because it just gets rather confusing for me. I have to try calling in and catching you live one of these days in your show. It's always great hearing from you, uh, from so many different people from all walks of life. Uh, please feel free to share my email with anyone who might be in or around the San Diego area. I'd love to connect with other flat earthers and meet more people who are also thirsty for the truth. Thanks again, Johnny, Kerr, Johnny Zura. It's C-Z-U-R-A. The C is silent because it's Polish. P.S. Please send me your, your PDF file empty shelves. P.S.S. If you ever need any tips on texting and or using your cell phone, I'm very savvy in that department. Ha ha. That's very funny, Johnny, because as you know, I hate cell phones. And yeah, his email is Johnny, J-O-H-N-N-Y dot C-Z-U-R-A at gmail.com and he is in San Diego. As far as answering your quick question about the flights, um, the, the, the video that's really good that's out there is by Rolling Thunder and I can't remember if it's Rolling Thunder 32, but the, um, the video is called The Plane Proves the Plane. Uh, I think Flat Earth's in the titles there somewhere. So look that up, The Plane Proves the Plane. It's a wonderful layout of flights and how, where they're connecting from and he compares it from a globe, from a Mercator map to an AE map and, and shows the differences. So it's, it works out really, really well. So thank you very much for that. And let's see. My voice is getting tired. I did a show last night, guys. I'm sorry. But I'm going to continue on. You know what? Because this is important. Uh, let's see. Art writes, hey, Mark, here's one for you. There's another article on the fate of Amelia Earhart doing the rounds on uh, MSN. This one states that after she and Noonan crash landed their plane in Nicomoroo Island, they made over a hundred distress calls on shortwave, which were picked up by people as far away as Texas, Florida, and Australia, possible only on a flat earth, not behind the curvature. And the article is at dailymail.com uh, or .co.uk. And it's called, Did Amelia Earhart Die a Castaway? Uh, crashing Pacific Mo <laughs> like Gilligan's Island. <laughs> Once Amelia Earhart, the first member of Gilligan's Island. That's awesome. Okay, a couple more. Chase writes. What does Chase write? Mark, I'm sorry, Mr. Sergeant. That's awfully formal. Thank you for taking uh, the time to read listener emails. Not only is it cool to get feedback and share thoughts, hearing you read my writing has made me more aware of my grammatical errors and typos. So thanks. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to call you out. If you, if you don't use spell checker or don't check your grammar, uh, I'm going to call you out because I'm, I'm reading this. You know, I will try to repair on the fly if I can, but if there's too many things in a row, yeah, I'll stumble like, you know, like I'm, I'm drunk trying to do the hurdles. It's just going to crash constantly. Um, don't let people get to you about your pronunciation. At least you do not have a rural South Carolina accent like myself, so it could be worse. Uh, yeah, I suppose, but I don't. I don't mind. 
I mean, it, look, there's some words. Everybody pronounces something wrong. And I'm learning like everybody as we go along. Two, I was in a town in South Carolina called Greenwood visiting someone in the local hospital. While in the room on the eighth floor, I noticed a mountain in the distance northeast of my location. I used the compass on my phone to get the heading about 280 degrees. I have since tried to find out what mountain this may be since the Greenwood area is the beginning of where the state begins to flatten. Hmm out as you head to the coast. The closest mountains in this direction I can find are at least 50 miles away. If I have the math right, I shouldn't be able to see anything under 13,000 feet, correct? This also has caused me to think about how I have seen mountains in Seneca, South Carolina from Anderson, South Carolina my entire life. That's at least 20 miles. Again, if my math is correct, I shouldn't be able to see anything under 2,000 feet. Uh, I think your math's off a little bit there. But that's okay, you know, keep working on it. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, you're, you're wrong. Um, 13 miles is, or I'm sorry, 20 miles is not 2,000 feet. So uh, it's eight inches per mile squared. There's some charts out there. Look at Earth's curvature calculator or go, go to uh, Rob Skiba's website. That's probably gonna be the quickest one, uh, testingtheglobe.com. You'll see some wonderful curvature stuff there. Uh, so you're, you're off, but that's okay. You're, you're, your head's still in the right place. Uh, number three, also recently I went on a trip to New York. I flew and of course, after takeoff, I started looking out the window. Unfortunately, the weather made it impossible to see the horizon at cruising altitude. But once we started our descent into LaGuardia, I could see it. Now I can tell everyone listening to this recording that it is flat. It is so flat. Pancake, tabletop, Kansas, flat. I flat out can't flat describe adequately to you how flatly flat that flat horizon was flat <laughs> that's a great paragraph awesome uh four i had a proud dad moment when my five-year-old asked people say the earth is round but when i look at it it's flat why is that i explained to her both sides of the issue made clear to her what i believe and advised her what to answer on any test Shout out to Rob in Texas, if he is listening, another life ruiner. Thank you again, Mr. Sergeant. I enjoy the show. And that's from Chase, so thank you. <clears throat> and as my voice starts to just crumble, let's see if I can get out maybe one or two more. Oh, this one's in all caps. Oh, I don't want to read this. Um, no. Well... All right, I'm going to read this. Don't send me stuff that's all in caps. Um, Dear Mark, I'm doing outreach at the University of Nevada at Reno. I show two placards with good effect. One shows sun rays coming through clouds and indicating a nearby sun. The other one shows uh, Oahu photographed from Kauai, visible from 73 miles away at their nearest points. The problem I am asking your help with is that I need to know to be more convincing on the second image, what curvature would the ball earth theory call for 73 miles? How tall an object would be below the horizon given the conventional ball earth theory? 73 miles, it's long, it's thousands of feet. So definitely um, go to the chart. Just look, any, any uh, earth curvature calculator will tell you, or again, go, go to testingtheglobe.com, Rob Skiba's website, there's some great resources there. Um, all the Flat Earth videos that I have looked at just give me the total useless information that the curvature can be calculated, as I believe from memory, 8 inches per mile squared. This does not help me at all, uh, me not being a mathematician. I would like to know, besides the curvature of 73 miles, a graph showing the curvature drop for 10 miles, 20 miles. Yes, I know. Go to testingtheglobe.com. Uh, but it is, I mean, it's easy to, to find out. In this case, it's 73. I'm not going to do it for you. 73 times 73, take that number, multiply by 8 inches. That gives you the total number of inches. Then you divide that by 12, that's feet. There you have it. Uh, let's see here. By the way, I've only been convinced of the Flat Earth for four or five months. I attend an Episcopalian church in Reno and have an appointment with the rector on this Thursday. At that time, I will discuss the Flat Earth with him, stressing the religious implications. Thank you for your wonderful work, Zan Overall. All right, do we have time for one more? I feel like I've been doing this forever and it's only been an hour. But keep sending the emails, guys. Uh, okay, let's. this will be the last one. Let's call this one the last one. It's from Monica. Dear Mark, my name is Monica Attar. Mexican. I'm Mexican in Israel. I'm happy I discovered this topic and your YouTube channel. It's been very helpful to understand this new yet old theory. I'm the kind that rather looks at crazy or unpopular theories because 
usually that's where the truth lies. I've been reading and watching stuff about this topic for about a month now. Sounds surreal, but at the same time, very logical. Even more logical is the cover-up. I'm a believer on those things that nobody wants to talk about. This is one of them. Let's say I am getting into it more and more. Here's a normal picture I took today of the Mediterranean Sea from an Israeli beach, and I realize it won't... W I won't look at the horizon the same way I used to. Two vessels in the far horizon, they aren't disappearing. They seem like they're, they're 100 meters <laughs> and no curvature. Um, I was a NASA believer, always science before faith. But as everything, nothing is black or white. The gray parts are the unspoken ones. Anyway, I was very much into the Nephilim and other ancient stories trying to understand our past. When I got shocked by the flat earth theory, suddenly the past looks less important than the lie we must be living in. Thank you for your time. I've got many questions, but that will be in a different mail. Let's keep it flat as it always was. Monica. All right. Thanks, Monica. And thanks for everybody that wrote this time. Remember, if you want to reach me, email is msargent, that's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. Phone number is 303-494-6631. I'll talk to you guys soon.